weeks. Now to something new we're calling Best Friends Today, exploring the special bonds in our lives, the friendships that carry us through the good times and the bad. Jenna Bush Hager is here with new research out of UCLA, breaking down the actual science of friendship. This is fascinating. It really was so interesting. Dr. Carolyn Parkinson is exploring how our brains make up can actually influence who we're drawn to and ultimately become friends with. I took part in the study with my oldest friend to see if chemistry and friendship is because of our brain's chemistry. I'm glad you chose friendship. Friendship, friendship. The saying goes, friends are the family you choose. They make us laugh in the good times, hold us through the bad ones and can quite literally help us survive. Studies show strong social ties increase your likelihood of survival by 50%. And according to a number of other studies, friendship can have multiple health benefits, like reducing stress, lowering blood pressure and cholesterol, and strengthening your immune system. In contrast, an absence of social connection can carry the same risk as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Farrell Fields is one of my closest, oldest, and dearest friends. I think we've been friends 25 years. Yeah, I think we met in the fourth grade at Camp Longhorn. Nobody it's... really thought I was that cool at Camp Longhorn. Remember, I, I got locked out of the cabin naked. <laughs> yes, you did. I was very dramatic. <laughs> you were very dramatic, but I was like, I am going to make her my friend. I think she's super cool. Our bond formed at camp has stayed strong through high school, marriages, and kids. The day that Mila was born, oh, anyway. you had a little bit of a panic attack. I was worried because you weren't answering and I, well, I, was, I was just giving birth. I know, but I was like, she's not <laughs> answering, something's going on. And I think that describes you perfectly. You care so much about your friends. You check in on people, you make sure they're feeling good. Farrell and I have only grown closer through the years. It's a testament to our commitment to friendship and our love for each other. You're very uh, good about staying in touch. If we haven't spoken in, I think, two weeks, yeah. it's, that's strange for us. Because we have grown up together, we just have this unique bond that a lot of other people don't have. And I know, we feel lucky. I'm fiercely protective of you, and you're super loyal to me. And I think it's just worked. Well, thank you for being fiercely protective of me. Well, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> I appreciate that. But do the reasons why Farrell and I click go beyond our shared experiences and memories? Dr. Carolyn Parkinson, an assistant professor and researcher at UCLA, believes so. Her research suggests the connection between friends has more to do with similarities in our brain's wiring and how we process the world around us. Past research has been focused on kind of surface level characteristics like are you of the same gender, are you of the same ethnicity. We wanted to use brain imaging to see if your brains actually process the world in an exceptionally similar way compared to people who aren't friends. Using an MRI machine, Dr. Parkinson monitored both of our brains as we watched a series of random video clips. The goal was to see if the same regions of our brains lit up at the same points during the videos. If they did, it would prove the way we view and interact with the world is the same. How important is friendship? But there's a lot of work showing that it's a fundamental humanity, just like, you know, food and water and shelter and social connection is exactly the same way. The next day, we stopped by Dr. Parkinson's office for the results. What you see on the screen here is basically a movie of the brain activity. When the colors get hotter, it means there's more blood flow to the area. Your brain is more active in that area. If you look at them both and compare them, you can see that you guys are kind of in sync with one another. Like, so we are compatible? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, <laughs> we can be French for 25 more years. Yeah, okay. <laughs> The pattern in our brains suggested that Farrell and I had similar responses to the videos we were shown, compared to the scans of two people who weren't friends, and whose brain activity did not sync up. We knew the results would be this way, we hoped. But you know what? We weren't going to end our friendship if they weren't. No. Nope. We'll stay friends. We'll stay friends for if you'll have me. I, I will have you. <laughs> So there are all these studies on friendship right now because people are lonelier now yeah. than ever. And we know that friendship also makes you work harder, by the way. Oh. People who have real friends at work have a only a 1 in 12 chance of feeling, if you don't have real friends, 1 in 12 chance of feeling engaged. Those who have best friends are seven times more likely 
to feel engaged. Mm, and I have to say, one of the best surprises about this job is all of y'all. I mean, wow. really, I feel that way, and, and y'all are some of my besties, and that's why we work so hard. I know. We do. <laughs> right? Well, it doesn't feel hard. like work, yeah. though, because we all feel... Yeah. yeah. Isn't it's, it ironic, though, in the age of Facebook friends, yeah. we're lonely or yeah. yeah. I don't I think, think it's ironic at all. I think it's yeah. because social media, yeah. you know, it's driving us apart. But I will Not say, like reach out to your best friend yes. or yes. reach out to a new friend. Make friends because it does make your life a really full one. It You're definitely right. does. Right, we- Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.